Welcome back to week three of Space Systems, which is unit four for grade five. The last couple weeks we've looked at stars and gravity. This week we're going to look at the Earth itself, and we're going to try to describe the seasons. It's sort of ironic that we're going to be learning about the seasons, since this week we actually are seeing a season, or in the last couple weeks I should say, we've seen pretty much all four seasons take place within a week. Uh, that being said, those aren't really the seasons. They just look and feel like the seasons for a very short period of time. What I'd like you to do today, first of all, is open the presentation on seasons. And this is going to be a very short presentation, just three slides. And within it, it's going to have common misconceptions. And I want you to watch this YouTube video. It's sort of uh, sort of funny because it's misconceptions about the, the seasons and what people think about that. But then what really actually causes the season? It's only two things. And most of you should be able to explain uh, what this means uh, by the end of this YouTube video and then the presentation and your learning this week. The second thing I want you to do is I want you to uh, log into Discovery Education and you're going to watch the video to the right and it's on this, the different seasons. It's very short, about three minutes long, um, so it shouldn't take too long. Lastly, I want you to open this document. It's called The Seasons. And this one you might want to print out um, because it's easier to write on those lines. Uh, it also, the first one is going to take some drawing. So if you aren't sure how to use a drawing tool on the computer, you're, uh, you would want to printed out so that you can just draw that line. Uh, so uh, just so you're aware of that, there will be some drawing, but otherwise you can answer the questions on the lines. And there will be an exploration along with this little lab. Make sure that when you're done with it, you put it into your to-be-graded folder. Um, as you complete the experiment, which is going to be at the bottom here, the exploration, so there's some questions at the top, um, but then there's an exploration with a flashlight and a toothpick. Make sure you do your, the best that you can to have the different materials. If you have questions, don't be afraid to email and ask them, uh, because sometimes the questions uh, don't make complete sense, or, they're, or I shouldn't say they don't make sense, but they're difficult to understand sometimes. So instead of guessing, feel free to email me. For your math connection this week, I'm going to teach you... Uh, it's, it's actually a very complex uh, math theorem, but we're going to do it very simply. And it's called the Pythagorean Theorem. And with that, what you're going to do is you're going to be able to find the height of things. The theorem itself is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And I know that you're looking at the screen going, Mr. Demers, I have no idea what this means, but I'm going to help you right now. First of all, the little 2, the squared, means you multiply a number by itself. So if your number, your number a, because a is a variable, let's say a is 3, you would multiply 3 times 3. If a was the number 5, you would multiply 5 times 5. That's what that little 2 means. So what I want you to do is think about different shadow lengths. And I know you're not probably going to be able to use your own, so we're going to have a, a, a practice question here. So a, if we look at this, would be the length of a shadow. B would be your height or the height of the person that you're measuring. So uh, we're trying to find um, the length of the object to the the top of the object to the end of the shadow. Uh, so with this, like I said, it sounds very complex, but you should be able to complete it pretty pretty well. So then, what I want you to do is answer this question on your Math Connections Unit Four document. If t if the if Tom's shadow is three feet long, and he is four feet tall. How far is the distance from the top of his head to the end of the shadow? So for this, you're going to fill in the blanks. So A would be 3, so 3 times 3. B would be 4, so 4 times 4. Then you add that together, and you find out what the square root of that is. So when you add these two numbers together, you're going to get another number, and then you're going to try to figure out what number could be multiplied times itself to get that number. And I'll give you a hint. It is a whole number, so it shouldn't be too hard for you to figure out. And once you see the number, I think you'll figure it out pretty easily. Lastly, for your literacy connection this week, open your stellar poetry uh, Google document, and you're going to be writing a sonnet poem. And a sonnet has rhyme to it. So uh, an example, example, I'll just read a couple lines of this one, and you'll be able to hear the rhyme. Scribbler, oh what a joy you can find here. Eric is the one that heads the great team. Full of poems, stories, and happy cheer. Hopefully it will make our readers glean. So if you take a look, the first and third line rhyme, and the second and fourth rhyme. And that's uh, how sonnets are written. And they can have different rhyming schemes. So they can have uh, what we just saw was ABAB. Or they could have uh, different rhyming where it's ABBA. So the first and fourth line would rhyme, and the second and third would rhyme. So just you're aware of that, but this is going to be a rhyming poem. You can write about all the seasons, or if you'd rather pick one of the seasons, that would work too. So again, if you want to pick out your favorite one, that would be great.